تجارب في إدارة الأعمال وخبرة في إدارة المشاريع ومع مهارات في تحقيق العمل الأخلاقي. قام ذات الشاب الطموح الحائز على ماجستير في الإدارة وإدارة الابتكار والتكنولوجيا بعد إدراك فن إتقانه لذاته وخفاياها بتأسيس شركته الخاصة مديرا على تنفيذها في سن مبكر. معلنا بذلك القدرة والتقدير في الإدارة والتدريب وساعيا للتطوير والتقديم والإبداع. رحبوا معي الأستاذ حيدر بن عدنان سعد. As an innovation consultant, recently graduated with a master's degree, Mr. Haider Zaadi will talk today about how to get an insight on your future or current career path. Please welcome Mr. Haider Zaadi. All of our ideas and perceptions, they're all inside our heads. And just like this cup, no more can go in if we don't learn to empty our cups. We have to always learn how to empty our cups daily on a regular basis so that we can learn to meet new people, to accept arguments, and we can learn to communicate better. Always learn to empty your cups. So when I was doing my presentation, I was thinking, uh, what is something very useful, something that all successful people share, something that is very common and very interesting that will benefit all of us, something that I wish I knew when I was younger. So I met with all of my friends, as you can see, these are some of our friends. They don't respond very well. <laughs> but I always go to them and ask them uh, different questions from time to time and uh, ask for their expert advice. I'm lucky enough to have met these uh, personalities. And uh, the rest we meet on a daily basis through books, through videos, through presentations, through many things, resources that is available to us. We can just go and reach to them whenever we want. It's such a valuable resource. And I was thinking, uh, how, why is reading so important? They've been telling us since we were young, but we never listened. Why is that? They always tell us, read, 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 but we never read. So I was like, what, what changed me? What made me like, want to read? What made me believe in reading? All these different personalities, different books, different movies, so many. I want to share a story. I met one person. He's uh, someone like us. He wasn't a bad person before. He was a very good person, but normal, not even special. So after a while, I met him like a couple of years, and he changed completely. He was a different person. I was like, what happened? He was like, uh, nothing. Where have you been all these years you've been uh, missing? He's like, no, nothing happened. But when I met him, the way he talks, the way he communicates, it was amazing. It was like magic, as if he got a PhD, as if he turned someone different completely. I can't even describe it. So I thought of a video to describe uh, what I meant. 
like I just wanted to show the effects of reading. All he told me, Haider, all this time I was just reading, reading. For two years he took a break from his life and he just read different books and resources. And I can't describe how he changed, but I have a small video I wanted to share to show you what I mean. What would you do? enabled me to finish the book in four days. What I could do with my day was limitless. I learned to play the piano for three days. Math became useful and fun. Even half listening to any language as it came fluent. Well, I've been doing a little research on Anton's tumor, and it's totally clear that anybody with familial abdominal spellicosis should be supplementing platinum based double regimens with icosympathetic acid. I suddenly knew everything about everything. Sure, you, you get a short term spike, but wouldn't that rapid expansion be by just not thinking too you know, because there are safeguards against aggressive overexpansion? Well, there aren't, because there are no safeguards in human nature. But we're wired to overreach. Mm -hmm. Look at history, all the countries that ever ruled the world, Portugal. Big, massive Navy. All they got now are soft cars, cheap condos. Now they're just sitting in a dank little island, busting over their suits. No one's stopping and thinking, hey, we're doing pretty well. We got France, we got Poland, we got a big Swiss bank account. You know what? Let's not invade Russia in the winter. Let's go home, let's pop a beer, and let's live off the interest. Yeah. My brain was just pouring this stuff out. Everything I'd ever read, heard, seen was now organized and available. Here it is, here you go. Hey, hey, listen, I'm sure you have a portfolio, but if you don't, I'd be very interested in working. I made some new friends who invited me to the beach. The beach was not their box. All my fear, all my shyness, gone. But beer lounging wasn't enough. So that was just a small video to describe the effects of reading. And of course, just like any exercise, reading is an exercise for the mind. It trains our mind and uh, makes us adapt easier in life. So what is this most important skill? Something that is very common with everyone, all these successful people. This skill is marketing. I know that all of us, when we say marketing, we hear, we imagine this type of marketing. The one that is branding, the one person selling. It is quite similar to it, but it's completely different. The marketing I'm talking about is something we had since we were young, something we always use, but we don't feel it. It's all around us. Since we were babies, since we were young, whenever we wanted something from our family, we used to cry. When we want milk, we cry. We never see a baby uh, getting milk for a smile. That was the only chance, we have to cry. That was like our chance to get marketing. Then we grew up, we start crying, but it doesn't work anymore. Our parents tell us, hey, stop being a baby. Don't cry, so we use a different approach. We learn how to smile, how to collaborate, how to change, we adapted, because crying didn't work anymore. We grew up, we started getting different demands. They were like, get good grades, you'll get what you want. So just like that, we learn in life how to adapt to different situations. And marketing is all around us all the time. The way we dress, the things we buy, the things we post, the Instagram, the social media, the perfumes. We care about these things. Sometimes we don't notice why we do it, but we do it because we want to provide a better inspection, a better perception to the other person. And we always love to do that because we want to look good to others. We want to show the best version of us, and that is marketing. But what happens when we learn it? We become so good at it. Anything, any skill, practice makes perfect. And it's just so simple. Marketing is just communicating with other humans effectively. It's influencing. It's selling your ideas, selling your thoughts. It's something that we need to learn since we were young. And so many different others behind us and before us have learned this. So believing in marketing is very important. One of the reasons why I believed in marketing is once I started reading, I was like, well, this, is this really a very useful skill? Let me try it out. So I started learning and learning about influencing others and everything. So one day I was like, let me try it on my friends. 
So I took two of my friends and they're like, let's go to Wadi Shab. We went to this amazing, beautiful place, Wadi Shab, so peaceful. Who's here been to Wadi Shab? Wow. All of you guys who didn't go, you guys have to go. This place is, it's, it's really heavenly. You guys would love it. So I took them there. It was an amazing day, relaxing, peaceful and everything. It was heaven. Then after it, we came back to the city and we decided to eat. So we went to sit center. And as you know, like the center on a weekend was very crowded, completely different to the atmosphere we were in. We were like in a very quiet place, amazing place that we went to, very crowded place, all this noise and everything. So I was like, okay, good. So I was talking to one of my friends. I'm telling him, man, he's all that different, the comparison, don't you feel the pressure inside of you? I was like, yeah, I do, you do. And you actually do feel it coming from Wadi <laughs> Shabak Center straight away. So we're just telling him, man, look at all this pressure, you know, the crowd, the people, everything. How do you cope with it? You don't. Um, it's like influence yourself, you don't let it out. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you have to let it out. I was like, why? I was like, because you know, you'll explode inside of you, you'll be sick if you don't let it out. He's like, how do I let it out? You have to shout. I'm like, just shout. And that's how it will go out. I was like, do you do that? I was like, yeah, I do that. I told my other friend, just say you do that. He was saying, yeah, we all do that. He was like, wow, he's weird. And he's a doctor, but <laughs> and I was telling him what to do. So he was just really pumped up and everything. But I was saying this, I wanted them to go to the car, I wanted them to shout in the car, just so he feels better. So we were walking and I'm just talking to him and telling him and motivating him and influencing him, telling this idea of he has to shout or he will explode or something. So we're walking in the mall and all of a sudden, my friend, <laughs> he gives the biggest shout in the whole mall. And my other friend, he just went and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Everyone just paused, the whole mall. They're like, what is going on? He did the biggest shout like from his chest. And he hugged me, he's like, hey, thank you so much. I feel so much better after <laughs> And it was crazy, but then uh, I didn't tell him straight away. I told him like a few days later so he doesn't get mad. I told him like I was just playing a prank on you and everything. But it does, you actually, we feel better as human beings when we express, and there is many different ways of expressing. This is just one thing that it's influenced me is uh, how this thing works. We don't even realize it. Practice makes perfect like any other skill. There is a book by Michael Gladwell uh, called 1000 Hours. He said that 1000 hours in any field, you become a master of it. We talked about all these different greats, Messi, the Beethoven, all of these great people that we know before us, they practiced 1,000 hours on a certain skill every day until they mastered it. They weren't born with these skills. They just grew with it. They practiced and practiced and practiced. And he talked about that any skill, you can be any person you want. Just like Steve Jobs always used to say, all this police and world around us, it's made by humans just like me and you. Nothing is impossible. They're not born with those skills. You can always learn it. Only 5% of people are born. So what is effective marketing? It's basically just two things. Mastering the inner world, our beliefs and perceptions, and the outer world, how we express them. So the inner world, what is the beliefs and the feelings that we have about things? It's how we look at things, how we see positive and negative things, all our perceptions, the things that we go up into. And don't let some of you opinion change your reality of things. There's a story about this elephant that they caught. Uh, they took him to the zoo. So the zoo guy was like, I want to tame this elephant. And he was a very stubborn elephant, always causing troubles, trying to escape. So what the zoo guy did, he tied a big metal ball to his leg. And he was like, he can't escape with this ball. So every time the elephant would try to resist and escape, he would feel pain. And he would keep on doing this every day, he would feel pain and sleep. And then he'd wake up the next day and try. Until after so many failures, he was like, that's it. This is my new reality. I have to accept that this is my home. I can't escape anymore. So then the next day, the zoo guy went to the elephant and he changed that metal ball. He put a small plastic ball. He was like, um, now the elephant can escape. But then what happened? The elephant just never escaped. He didn't even try it. The next day, the day after it. Everyone was surprised. The kid came and he was like, Mom, why is not this elephant trying to speak? Why is he not funny? And the zoo guy came he's like, he is powerful enough. Me and you know that. But what's most importantly is that this elephant doesn't know it. So in this life, sometimes people tell us we're not good enough. We can't do something. That doesn't mean it's true. This doesn't mean someone's opinion of us makes it a fact. We have to learn how to adapt and accept other people's opinion. For example, these famous uh, celebrities, some are rich, some are successful, some are beautiful, but even with that, they commit suicide. Why? Because they fail to 
only controlled a simple thing called the belief system. They couldn't control that. And by the way, uh, if anyone has any question, you can stop me anytime and ask me. I just made a new concept. You can text your question to this number, and I'll be happy to reply to it throughout the presentation, because I know that some of you might be shy to raise the hands. I know as myself when I go to some presentation. But yeah, they ended up committing suicide just because they failed to control a simple thing. And I wanted to share about a simple story that happened to us when we to Spain about how someone can be so positive to an extreme level. Not, uh, so we, me and my friend decided to go to Spain, and one of my friends is a diver. He was like, let's go diving. And me and this other friend were like, we never dived before. How can we go diving? He said, no, no, it's fine. You can go and you can learn. There's probably some junior diving or something. We're like, OK. So he spoke to the diving instructor, and he told them that two divers never dived before. So trying to find new thing. Like, it's cool. Come all together. We're going to go for a simple, nice dive. Don't worry. And in Spain, everyone just says, don't worry. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> everyone is so cool there. And uh, so we went, and then this guy, all he told, told us, he's like, don't worry guys, today will be a very fun day. All you have to know, this means very good, this means not very good, this is to go up, this is to go down. I was like, that's it? He's like, yeah, that's it. I was like, okay, probably he's going to teach us once we go to the swimming pool or somewhere to train. So then he gave, we took all the equipment and everything, and took us to the ocean straight away. So I was like, okay, maybe we'll practice on the boat or something. But no, so we, we just wore everything like this heavy stone belt. I don't know who's here been diving. Okay, we have one, two dives <laughs> before us, they might have experience in this. So it's like they make you wear a very heavy stone belt. It's like, I don't know, they want to put you to die or something. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> and the whole oxygen tank and everything. And I was telling him the oxygen tank is hitting my head. He's like, no, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's cool. He's like, okay. So we go in the water, and then I'm asking him, what is this, what does this mean? And he's like, don't worry about anything, just, just, you know, just wear this and let's go. I was like, okay, fine. So I put the oxygen mask inside, and he just started uh, dragging us down. So I was like, okay, now we'll probably go up so I can check. But no, we just started going down. And it's my first time in my life breathing from this uh, breathing machine, the oxygen tank. And it was a very scary experience for me, first time. So now, now I want to communicate with them, like, what's going on? Are we going to go up or down? It's like, ah. and you can't, you know, in water, you can't even go, I'm breathing from this. But then I started realizing that this breathing thing is not, it's not working properly. It's like, I don't know if anyone smoked like a very bad shisha or like if you have any dust. It's very dusty, you want to cough, but if, like I can't, it's just uh, inside the water. And I'm, I want to communicate, so I'm like doing this down, so I'm doing this. And then I think he understands that we want to go more down. So he's putting us <laughs> further down, because it's the first time I don't understand. I'm looking at my other friends, trying to see if I, I, I don't know what was going on. Some of my friends were far, and I was trying to chase the guy all the time. I was just like stuck in the water. I didn't know what I was doing. So then water goes in my goggles. And I'm like, OK, that's it. I think I'm going to die today here. <laughs> water goes in my goggles. I can't breathe from this. And I'm going to the guy and telling him. Then I remember it. OK, this means not good, because we just reached the ground. That's it. There's no more down. So I was telling the guy, yeah, not good. He's like, no, I'm like, I'm good. You know, I'm water inside my eyes and everything. I can't communicate. And he's like, no, no, good, good. But then uh, somehow we managed to survive that dive and we went back. And uh, the funny thing is what happened also to my other friend. His oxygen tank literally finished. And that never happened. <laughs> it finished in the dive. And he had to go to the guy and tell him my oxygen finished. Please give me another one. It was just uh, crazy. And I have a short video to show this. see the positive in every situation, like what Bruce Lee said, be like water, be flexible, don't be like stone, be adaptive, you can adapt to every situation. 
I remember a story uh, every time when I arrived to London, you know, the security check. We always go to the green one. I don't think, I didn't see anyone go to the red one. But every time I go to the green one, I'm like, okay, I don't want the police guy to stop me. So let me try this. I'll try to be cool. I go and uh, I'll just like look at him, hello. And, and then he stops me. I'm like, why? Why did he stop me? I don't know. What did I do? He opens the bag. Of course, there's nothing inside. I kind of wonder. I'm like, okay, maybe he thinks I'm trying to be cool. So then, okay, this guy's hiding something. Let's stop him. So then I tried again. I came, uh, when I came on my next trip, I went, I'm like, okay, I'll try a different strategy. I'll try to not look at him. Pretend that everything is cool. Call me my phone, my phone, so he doesn't. But then he stops me again. I'm like, why? <laughs> why me? I don't know what happened. And then uh, I'm like, okay, I'll try it again. I went again, I shaved my beard. I'm like, okay, now I must be a bit English or Indian. <laughs> and I go, and he stops me again. I'm like, why? It's always the thing. I was like, okay, that's it. He's always going to stop me. I should adapt to that. So I was like, okay, how can I look at this at a positive, this negative situation as something positive? Because I don't think anyone likes to be stopped by a police guy and all this uh, time consuming and everything. But then I realized that uh, I came once more and he didn't stop me. So I went back home. I was like, okay, what's different this time? I realized something <laughs> so different is that that wrapper around the bag, I had to open it myself for the first time. <laughs> I it was such a big hassle. I didn't know how to open it. I got the knife and tried to take it out and everything. I was like, wow, all that time before I didn't appreciate it. The police guys used to open it for me. And now like in my last trip uh, when I came, I tried to let the guy you know, stop me, I'm like going and everything, but then he didn't stop me and I have to. <laughs> so sometimes even a negative situation can be positive, but we're not looking at it from the positive perspective. We have to always learn how to see things from a good perspective. Just like a belief system, they uh, did one research on a class, they split the class in two. So they told the class that uh, colored eye students are much better and smarter than uncolored eye students. So wow, so all the students, all of a sudden, after a few weeks, all the colored eye students started doing better. Their grades became better. And what happened to the non-colored? They started doing worse. So then they got gathered in the class again. They told them, oh, by the way, the research is wrong. There's some mistakes. Like, oh, what happened? No, no, it's the opposite. It's the non-colored eye. They're better than the colored eye. So what happened is the non-colored eye, grades started improving, and the colored eyes, grades started uh, becoming worse. So they were like shocked, like just the belief system can change your whole perception of things. And uh, I just wanted you guys to participate in something very small. I want all of you guys to take out your mobile phones. Smartphones, I know you guys have them. I think uh, something like these. You know, something like this. And there's other brands. Uh, just open your notes or whatever, something comfortable you like to write at. And just write uh, your dream, your passion. Something that uh, you really love. I'll give you uh, one to two minutes to write that. What is the facial expression? It's how we smile and uh, the way we talk and the way we smile and laugh. And it's very important and it's so easy at the same time. You know, smiling only takes 40 muscles from 80 muscles. I want everyone to smile. Why? Well, right, it's so easy. Like, it's, it's, so, it's so much easier. You, no, that's a very good smile. <laughs> um, and laughing as well. We don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. Always try to laugh uh, at all times. And there was a research done, they said that even if you fake smiling or fake laughing, it will make you happier, like your mood and everything will change. And tonality, what is tonality? It's this uh, amazing voice instrument that we have here. It's like, I lower my voice if I want to say something very important and, you know, shorten it. Or I can talk in a very exciting way if I want to say something, grab your attention. And you can play with your voice in many different ways. I want to tell you like a story of how uh, I use my voice to, uh, who likes a Ferrari first of all? Who wants, who wants to drive a Ferrari, try to drive a Ferrari? I mean, I'll give you like a small tip of how you can drive a Ferrari for free. It's a very easy method. So one day I was waiting for my friend um, in London next to Hyde Park, and then he called me, he told me, hi there, I'm going to be late for uh, 30 or 40 minutes. I thought, oh, it's fine. I'll go find a coffee shop, I'll wait for you. He's like, I'm sorry, look, don't worry. So I went, I was walking around, and I saw the Ferrari showroom. I was like, maybe I should go inside and uh, take a look at the Ferraris. Like, but then if I go in, you know, like, they'll see I'm a student, everything. It's like, no, that's fine. I'll go in, I'll pretend that I'm someone important, maybe, you know, I'll look good. So I went inside the Ferrari showroom, and I go and walk around the Ferraris. I don't look very impressed, you know, but inside I'm like, what? But like, from outside I'm just looking, I'm acting very cool, walking very slow. 
as if I have the whole time of the world. That's like I think what rich people do, right? They just have so much time. And, uh, so I'm walking slow and uh, going to the Ferrari, opening the door. I don't look very, very interested, as if I'm disgusted with the car. <laughs> but it's inside me like I'm burning, wow. <laughs> I, can't, I never even touched it, you know? And then like I'm just feeling the leather, as if I know anything about leather, but I'm just pretending. And uh, so then the lady comes like, oh, welcome, sir, how are you? I'm like, uh, I'm very good, uh, how are you? <laughs> talking I'm very, and suddenly I don't know what happened to my accent. I'm talking like an Arab, like, you know, like one of the Arabs. I'm very good, uh, how are you? So then uh, she asked me, oh, how can I help you? I'm like, I don't know. Oh. She's like, do you like the Ferrari? I'm like, I think it's, it's nice. I, mean, I don't see it. It's nice. It's normal. You know? So then she was like, uh, which one do you like? I'm like, I don't know. Which one is the comfortable? Uh, I like the comfortable one. Is it comfortable? She's like, yeah. What about, do you want a test drive? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Do I want a... Which one is the comfortable one? Talking very slow, very different, as if I'm not interested. Then she's like begging me, please take a test drive. It's a It's a very nice car. I'm like, should I go to the other one? Like she said, no, 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 please. So she gave me a test drive. She actually made me sit, did everything, the paperwork. She gave me a free test drive. I'm like, wow, I wanted to rent a car with my friends uh, the other day. It was like 500 pounds for one day or something. I was like, and this girl, she's begging me to try the Ferrari. <laughs> but just by changing your voice, sometimes uh, you can control the outcome. You can change the perceptions of things. Even I want to talk about a story when I was selling back in these uh, softwares to uh, companies. So you had an interview with one of the big companies and uh, we did the presentation for the software and everything. They really liked it. So they did the demonstration and everything we gave them. And uh, then they were like, okay, so we like your product, we like your service. What is your price? So then I was like stuck, I was with my partner. We didn't discuss the price yet. We didn't expect it to be that fast. So I was looking at my partner and I'm like, uh, it's like as if we're and it hasn't. We tell them, yeah, you start, you start. I'm so then I just told them, you know, like our price is average. It's the market price. We care about uh, quality, what our consumers. We don't charge that much. They're like, what is your price? It's like, uh, and I just said, 50,000. Then uh, it's like a long pause. I felt like that was the longest pause. And then I was thinking, like, wow, what if it was too much? It was too low. And my friends are looking at me and they're both stressed. So then uh, the guy just looks at us and he's like, wow, that's it, done. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, done. But of course, I didn't say really from outside, I was really inside. And then he's like, uh, I'm like, okay, very good, we'll get the papers ready. And you know, I'm trying to pretend that I'm so cool, as if he gave me just five reals or something. <laughs> and uh, inside me, I was like, I'm, I'm going to explode, like me and my partner. So we wanted to share, but like, we we're just holding it. And uh, I was so confused, I didn't know, because me and my partner were both pretending to be so cool that I thought that he's. He's mad or something. <laughs> Until we left, I'm like, what is your... I was like, okay, we just wait till we leave the company. Then we left the company. He's like, no, no, it's better. Let's wait till we leave the neighborhood. And we left the neighborhood. And he's like, are you serious? Oh, you the biggest deal. But it's just uh, so funny sometimes how you can control your tone to create different outcomes and different perceptions of other people. Too. And you can feel the passion through the tone sometimes uh, when you meet some, some people, when they talk about something they love. Or when you see someone asking him, what's your name? He says it, my name is this. Or my family name and everything. With such passion, you can feel it through the tone sometimes. Steve Jobs, whenever he sold his iPhone, it was so, he was so passionate about it. I remember I met one uh, Omani guy in uh, Oman. And uh, he was describing me this product, this new business he has. And it was so normal. Like I wasn't very impressed. But the way he described it, as if he was talking about you build the next new iPhone or something. It was so normal. And he was telling me, all of my friends, my family, they all don't support me. They say it's a bad idea. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, maybe they're right, you know, it's a bad idea. But because he was so passionate, he managed to get an investor to invest in him around 50,000 Amani Riyals. Just because of his passion in this thing. He believed in it so much that it shows in the tonality. And what is uh, body language? Body language is how we communicate through our body. So it has to, you know, go with what we're saying. We can't be like... Go look upstairs, downstairs, I'm talking to you right now, and doing different body languages, you know. It should match with what we're saying. We can't just mix them up. I wanted to show a small video of how body language talks to you. Good morning, sir. What can I get started for you today? What's that? 
three vintage boxes. Uh, would you care for a pastry? Uh, nope. Uh, oh, three mocha lattes. Chocolate chip muffin. Yep. Uh, you and three polar carton CDs. I love the Beatles. Stay on my life. Sorry. <laughs> 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 So I can see uh, as an example of a body language uh, how it makes a difference how we communicate with our body. And there's also different uh, postures in sitting. When we talk to someone, there's different types of body language that we can use that different, uh, provides a different perception of what we're saying. Like in this video, some kinds of postures. And burglarized, I think more than once, twice, yes. and you yourself have confronted the burglar. Yes. Hey, come on, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, one always thinks what one would do in a situation like that. And, oh, you I know, know what I would do. <laughs> I, would, I would just, I would get, I would just <laughs> climb yes. into the disposal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, I would just... Uh, I, I know they do, and, but I am beloved in America. That's what people in Finland think. Have you ever been to Finland? No, I haven't. You should go. I, and then when, when you come back and tell us what it's like, I've never been either. Have you ever been to Scotland? Actually, no. No, my last name is Stuart, too. I know, I was going to say there's a lot of... Yeah. I've met a lot of girls called Stuart in Scotland. <laughs> I want to be your alarm clock. Yeah. I want to come to your house in the morning and just look you eye eyes so you look great. Some people need you. Right. Know, yeah. You need to hear it more. Yes. I, I do need to hear it more. You look great. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> do you ever encounter people you're like, you look... Uh, no, no, I tell them. 127 hours. Yes. Is that how many hours you look in the mirror per day? Who did you shoot that? Utah. Mormon State. What was his name? Scientology. I've always wanted to combine science with Tology. <laughs> so just a brief uh, of the different communication uh, body language that we can show to others and the body language types. So what is the first imp perfect impression that you want to put in anyone when you first meet them, or in an interview, or when you're trying to sell something? We want to show those three things, sharp as a tack, enthusiastic, and respectful at the same time. And how do you do that? Because when you talk to someone, when you meet them the first time, you're playing a movie in his head. It's either a good movie or a bad movie. Every time someone talks to us, we're just imagining things. When someone is trying to sell us something, we're like, okay, is this thing going to work? And we imagine ourselves, okay, I'm using this product or this thing. Is it good for me? Is it bad? We play this movie. So it's on us to choose how we play that movie to them. We can choose to make an amazing movie, or we can choose to make it an horror movie. We, cha we change that, and we choose how to do that. So this is a sample of one of the softwares I did for a lawyer companies. Because when I started, uh, one of my targets was to sell to law firms. And I went to them at first, telling them I want to make a software for you guys and everything. Because when I was working with lawyers, I saw that they had so many different papers. So I was like, this could be good for them, you know, like, find all these papers, organize them, put them in softwares. So I used to go, I always get rejected. First time, second time, I'm like, what is wrong? So 
So then I changed some things. I brought an Indian guy with me, and then I started like, okay, seeing this thing works. And then I was like, okay, let me try to make it better. I got a British guy with me, made him wear a suit. And wow, everybody's like, yes, yes, yes. I don't know, somehow, <laughs> us back home, it's just when we see someone from a foreigner, we just feel so great about it. So then I was like, no, let me get something even better. How do I create that first impression, sharp as a tack, enthusiastic and respectful? I was like, why don't I propose the solution to them straight away instead of me asking them? So I designed the whole software working with a couple of law firms designed specifically for them. I go to them, I talk to them, and straight away I present this for them, the whole solution to their problems. And that was an easiest yes to all the same solutions and the problems. And it's just sometimes you have to be creative. Hello, how are you, Coach Danny? How is okay, everything? Oh, One of the best good. tennis uh, coaches in Oman. Oh. <laughs> so, Coach, you just wanted to know what is the youth? What is the secret of your youth? Only you exercise. have found the fountain. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> Only exercise, eat the right food, and then be happy all the time. Be passionate and always believe in God. You're always positive. Yeah. Okay. That's, always that's what we learned from you, from you, Coach. Enjoy your life all the way. Up. I think no one can guess how old you are, Coach. <laughs> no. <laughs> now I'm 68 after this. Wow, mashallah. <laughs> you have found the fountain of youth. That's really? literally the secret, yeah. No, I don't know. I Positivity. Don't know what what know. about uh, exercise? You exercise yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's a matter of exercise. You know, hmm. always be positive. Eat the right side. Not too much meat or something like that. Mostly vegetables. Okay. And select and juices. Wow. Good wow. juices. Wow, thank you. Enjoy thank you, Coach. Enjoy your day. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Coach. See you.